Greetings class. What I'm doing now is to make several recordings uh, on intellectual property. I'm going to try to make them short, but I know sometimes I seem to talk on and on. Hopefully each one will be no more than 15 minutes. And there will be six recordings altogether, uh, but it's important to listen to this one first. So this is your uh, introduction to intellectual property. And if you look at the picture on the slide, I, um, there's uh, someone's written faces on their fingers, and it's uh, supposed to give you that sense that intellectual property includes different ways of expressing what you invent. So that's why I have this picture on the beginning of every section that I record. So first I want to talk about property and what property means. Basically under the law, property is a bundle of rights as opposed to individual items of property. Typically, when we talk about property, just in common language, we talk about something that we own. So it might be a car, it might be a house, it might be our books, it might be our phones. We think of kind of tangible things that we own or possess. In the law, though, when we talk about property, we talk about a set of rights that you have in that property. So when you talk about um, this bundle of rights, for example, let's say that this stick here um, that I'm indicating um, at the top, that this stick is one of the items in the bundle of rights that you have when you have property. And that might be the right to uh, temporarily transfer possession of your property. Now, how do you temporarily transfer possession of your property? Well, you might do that if your car doesn't run right, so you take it to a mechanic you still own the car, but you transfer possession of that property temporarily, transfer possession temporarily of that car to your mechanic. So that's one of the bundle of rights that you have when you own property. You also have the right to separate out that property. So for example, you do have a car and you decide, you know what, I really don't need my tires. <laughs> so I'm going to give my tires to someone else. Because that's your car, you have the right to separate out that item of property and give the tires to someone either temporarily or even permanently if you want. Although I presume you'll be buying another car after you do that. So that's an example of what property is in general and what that bundle of rights includes. Now you can take a moment and pause even and think about what other kinds of things would be included as part of that bundle of rights, that bundle of property rights. So. Um, here's the first question. Property includes the right to temporarily transfer possession of that property. True or false? And I'll give you about 10 seconds to answer. Okay, so the answer is true. That's part of what property is. And again, we're looking at what the legal definition of property is, not what we mean when we use property in just ordinary language. We, in the law, make a distinction between real and personal property. And real property is property that's attached to land, or it's part of land, or is land, and personal property is something else. So we're going to talk a little bit about the distinctions and the similarities between the two. When we think of real property, probably the first thing that comes to mind is land. So on the slide, I have a picture of uh, several houses. Um, and all of these would be considered property. It might be that one person owns all of this property. It might be that uh, each of these are, uh, these pieces of land are owned by different people. Note that when we talk about property, we're not just talking about the dirt. We're talking about the vegetation on the land and all those other things that are part of what would be considered real property. They include things attached to land. I mentioned vegetation already, but they would also include like buildings. So even though a building is made up of lumber that are a brick or of stone or of stucco, uh, which is kind of a composite that you, that's individual movable items when put together make the building, the building is considered attached to land and therefore the building is real property also. 
Note that um, some items get attached to real property, and when they do, then they become part of the real property too. In addition to the building itself, but let's say you have a central air conditioning unit that's attached to the land. That would be considered real property unless you detach it. Once you detach it, it changes in character. It becomes personal property again. Airspace is considered part of real property. So the airspace above your house is considered real property, although government can restrict when you can, what you can do with that airspace. For example, the buildings that are on this picture have chimneys. And if you decide to um, burn wood, you may be in violation of government's restriction on your ability to burn wood. And in fact, in Fresno, that, that's an issue. You can't just burn wood unless you have no other way of producing heat. So, um, but typically own the airspace with government restrictions. And the airspace is the usable airspace so that planes can still use the, use the air without having to get your permission. Imagine what that would look like if every air company had to get permission of all the landowners in order to fly across the land. So you own airspace, but it's the usable airspace above your property. It also includes minerals. And in this picture, I don't have an, um, an example of minerals, but what I want to convey is that whatever is under the land is also considered real property. Um, if the minerals include um, minerals like uh, gold or something like that, then those are discrete items that you can pick up and decide where your ownership of gold ends and where it doesn't. But if you're talking about oil, um, then there's a complicated legal system for determining what your oil rights would be. And you don't necessarily own all the, you can't just block off the oil because the oil flows from property to property. So it becomes more complicated when you're talking about oil or gas or other, or, or water for that matter, other items that move, they don't stay on one piece of property. Um, I mentioned already water. Water is considered real property if your water is a pond that's on your property, wholly on your property, then you would own that. However, if you're talking about rivers and creeks and other um, water that flows across several properties, then you own the rights to some of that water, but you don't own all the water. In other words, you can't say, you know what, I'm tired of um, people taking the water, I'm going to block this river. You can't do that because you only have the right to access to a certain amount of that water. And uh, of course, the scope of that is beyond what we're, I'm going to talk about now, but I just want you to get a sense of what's included with real property. So, the next question. Real property includes property in a line up to the usable airspace. True or false? And I'll give you a few seconds to answer that. I just talked about it, so I'm sure you know the answer already. And the answer to that one is also true. That is what is included in our definition of real property. In addition to real property, we have personal property. And personal property can be tangible or intangible. The picture on the slide is a picture of, I believe this is a cello. Um, it could be a bass fiddle, but I think it's a cello. And that's an example of personal property, uh, tangible personal property, that is. One type of intangible property, pers uh, personal property, is intellectual property, and that's what chap this chapter is about, is about intellectual property. But I wanted you to have a background um, of information about it. In this picture, um, I have someone who's um, talking, about, um, talking about property. And the reason that we protect intellectual property is that intellectual property relates to ideas which are the product of human creativity. I love this picture of this church, and someone may know which church this is. I don't know. 
but I love the picture because it shows the level of creativity that humans can engage in. Now, this happens to be a um, you know physical creativity that uh, modified the building, um, but they might also have a copyright on the look of this building, the style of this building, the architecture of this building. It's a gorgeous building. And the idea of intellectual property is that it protects the products of human creativity. And what are the types of intellectual property? We're going to talk about several. They include patents, copyright, trademarks, trade secrets, and unfair competition as all aspects of intellectual property. So which of the following is not a type of intellectual property? A is copyright, B is trademark, C is new ideas, D is trade secrets, and E is trademarks. And I'll give you about 10 seconds to look at that and select the correct answer. The correct answer to this one is C. Now you may say, wait a minute, I just told you that ideas, um, intellectual property includes ideas. Um, what I said is intellectual property was created to protect the production of those ideas. The ideas themselves cannot be protected. It's our expression of those ideas that is what is protected under intellectual property. So thanks for listening, and I will see you online.